Okay, so we're gonna use Blender to stabilize to make your video go from this to this. Now that's a lot better and I'm gonna show you how to do this. This little boat clip here, um, shot this with my phone. I really like this, this clip. I'm gonna try to stabilize the boat. I want the boat to be the center of our focus. And we're gonna do that with Blender 3D because Blender 3D has awesome motion tracking and stabilization. So the first we do is go into the VFX. I, was, I go over here, VFX, that's one of the many ways of getting over here. So let's grab the clip in question and just drag it right here. The first thing that might stand out weird to you is the color. It looks weird. It doesn't look quite the same as when we played it. And that's because the color space, let's go to color management, go from filmic, to standard. Now that's what my phone recorded. Now the thing about Blender is um, it kind of likes to know how many frames are in the project before it gets started and it defaults to 250. So I'm going to click over here on this set scene frames 600. What this does is kind of gives us a better idea of what we're working at with here. Now we have the opportunity to pre-fetch the video. I'm going to run on a RAM before I can do it. But we'll start a little bit. And anything you see this purple line here, anything this records up to there is just going to be in RAM. So it's going to be nice and smooth. Once you get past that, though, it gets a little, gets a little choppy. And that's going to really be a negative point when we're running the tracking software, because then it has to do multiple things at once instead of just focusing on the tracking. But that's OK. I will pause it during the slow parts. OK, so we have the scene frames connected. We have as much prefetch as we can, which is admittedly not a lot so let's zoom in real tight now this is a 4k 60 frames per second at least i think it's 60 let's see properties um yes 4k 60 but as you can see the low light kind of degraded picture quality but that's okay we just need strong contrast i'm going to use this second window here so i'm going to click on add marker and i'm going to click right there that's a good spot scale it up a little bit Oh, it's a scale. I hit S and then dragged and made it better. So let's start tracking this spot. That was way of a smoother track than I was expecting. <laughs> so over here, you have these little sections here. You want to click on stabilization. And with your one stabilizer selected, enable 2D frames, 2D stabilization, and add that. Now it knows that that is a point of stability. Whatever that spot is, that needs to be a spot. When you play it back, it's not going to really show up right away because what you have to do is you have to come over here to clip display and show stable. Now, if we play this, look at that. It stays nice and stationary. So it's kind of bouncing all around. So what we can do is we can use auto scale. Auto scale will try to guesstimate the best spot for it, but it usually bases it off what the frame average is. So I'm going to come over here to th frame 301 and change the anchor frame to 300. That's a bit more centered. So now we hit play. Look at that. That's pretty rad. So what's the next step? We have a tracker. It is stabilized. The video is stabilized. It's zoomed in. Or again, we're working with 4K. But I'm going to use this opportunity to export this 4K clip as 1080p, which will always give you a better picture quality after you zoom in. So we come over here to the compositing tab, turn on use nodes, and the render layers, we're not doing render layers today. To make this job a little easier, I'm gonna add another, that's con I'm sorry, Shift A to make this menu, or you can come over here and hit add. Shift A, we're gonna put another output. This is going to be a viewer. And for our input, we're gonna do movie clip. And if you click on this, you see we already have a movie clip loaded into the, into the um, project. One out there, one out there. Um, that took a second. Go over here to the side tab. There's a view. Fit. There's some other tools you can move things around like like that and whatnot, but fit is what I'm usually happy. I just need to get a, a good gauge of what's going down. Again, this is a 4K clip that will be exported to a 2K clip. So if I click on render image, it's super punched in, which we don't want super punched in. I mean, maybe you do, but I do not. I do not want it super punched in. So one thing I'm going to do to make life a little bit easier is I'm going to shift and right click. That kind of makes this great little 
nugget there. It makes things easier to set up. So step one, let's go into distort, stabilize. And if, excuse me, freak out for a second. So you select that clip again. And there we go. Now it's stable. So here's what's happening. It loads the movie clip. It stabilizes the movie clip, which includes that zoom in. And then that comes out here, one to the compositor and one to the viewer. So we can see what it's going to look like when it's composited. Because right now it's still render image. It's still super blown up. We don't want that. We want to scale, boop, and make that 0 0.5, obviously, followed by 0 0.5. And now render image. There it is. That's the right size. All right, sweet. So now as we know it looks right and it's the right size, we make sure our output's 1920 by 1080. Excellent. So over here in the output settings, FFmpeg video encoding, I'm going to change that from output quality to perceptually lossless. I'm going to be doing some editing, so I'm going to actually make it lossless this time. Boat stable dot MKB. Accept that. And now we do the render. As this video clip is rendering out, I'm going to take a moment to shout out to my Patreon subscribers. I got a new Patreon subscriber, um, Veronica Explains, who has uh, bumped my monthly average up to $12 a month. Uh, Patreons, I'm incredibly happy to have all the Patreon supporters I do. And if you'd like to join this incredibly exclusive list, um, the link will be down below. Okay, we're done. And let's take a quick comparison here. Here's the original, a little on the shaky side, but beautiful. And here's the stabilized version. Look at that. That's fun. All right, guys. So that was it. It was just kind of a raw, grab it, shoot it, stabilize it. It's pretty impressive that you can do video like this now where I can just shoot something with my phone while I'm out and about that I absolutely enjoy, come home, drop it into Blender and Caden Live, two very powerful open source pieces of software that I can use to make something like this. And that, uh, that's amazing. Anyways, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.